that all worked. So I've hit record. Now, what we're going to do next is a few quick uh, bits and pieces. So let me just uh, flick to, here we go. I've got some, some quick slides here. So just to say to everybody, welcome um, to Local Gov Digital Live. It's the second one of these that we're running, uh, which is jolly exciting. And that's today's date, in case you didn't know. Uh, so what is Local Gov Digital? Very quickly. So we're your friendly neighbourhood community for digital practitioners in local government. So uh, we're free to join, volunteer run. Um, we've got an online community uh, in Slack where people ask each other questions and share problems and things like that. And we try and help each other out as much as we can. We run events, uh, online ones like this. So Local Gov Digital Live happens every month on the first Tuesday of the month at 11 o'clock. Uh, but we also run some in-person events. I know we've got uh, my good friend, uh, um, Nick Hill, uh, on the call, who helps us to run uh, local gov camps, um, uh, which are our in-person events and which are always absolutely um, marvellous. And we also work on shared projects together and we try and collaborate on stuff and find shared solutions to shared problems, uh, which is all rather excellent. You can find out more and join us if you go to localgov.digital, uh, which is brilliant. So a few parish notices before we get started. Uh, we've launched our, our new website to universal um, acclaim. I think it's probably fair to say uh, in that um, uh, I thought it was excellent. Uh, we also, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had our local Gov Camp East Midlands uh, event, which was in Newark, and it was absolutely brilliant. It was a rip-roaring success. Uh, we had loads of people turn up, uh, lots of folk who don't normally come to these events, and I think that we have took away from it that there's a real need for some in-person events that happen at a more local level, because there are people that are turning up to this event in Newark that would never normally come down to London or go up to Manchester or whatever it might be. So absolutely brilliant to, to, to have folk there. And so we need to be organising more of those. So if anybody's out there that fancies running something in their hometown, then just let us know. More good news. Uh, the Local Government Association have agreed to support Local Gov Dig Digital with admin. Yay! Uh, I'm terrible at admin, so any help on that front is, is, is greatly appreciated. So that's excellent. We still don't know quite know how that's going to work, but hopefully it means that things will just be a little bit better organised in future. Uh, Phil, we saw Phil earlier uh, talking about uh, the terrible food that he feeds his children. Um, he's starting up a special interest group uh, in all things AI. So if you've got an interest, a special interest in that, or even just a normal interest, uh, then go along uh, and, and get in touch with Phil and he'll introduce you to some of the things that, uh, that he's doing. And I think it's very much focusing on, as it always is with local gov digital, very practical, very practitioner focused, you know, is it's not just like flinging AI at everything, not just thinking that we're going to be making millions of pounds of savings using this, you know, where can it actually be used and what's the right way of using it? And the other news is that we've recruited a new steering group. So um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Local Gov Digital, we're entirely volunteer run. And we've got, uh, we have a, a steering group, which is some people who are a bit more volunteery than, than, than others. And uh, we put out a call about a month ago uh, for people who wanted to be on our steering group. I'm delighted to say that we got lots and lots of responses. So not everybody uh, was able to uh, to sneak in, um, unfortunately. But um, I'm happy to say that uh, this is our new steering group um, here. So we've got one or two faces uh, that have stuck around, uh, mainly me, because I'm in charge and I'm not going to sack myself, but also Kat, uh, who's who's Kat Sexton, who's the vice chair. I'm not sure if she's with us yet this morning. Uh, but here we got. So we've got we've got Ben joining us from from DLUC. We've actually got a councillor on board now. Uh, but what's even better is that it's a councillor that knows a bit about computers because it's Ben Proctor. He's also an expert, of course, in amphibians. So that always comes in helpful. Also, we've got Chris from Northumberland, Craig from Cumberland, me from Cumberland. Cumberland. We've got Dummery from uh, Enfield, Kailani from Somerset, Kat, as I mentioned, from Birmingham, our vice chair, Madeline, who I know is on the call here this morning, from North Yorkshire, Marta, Melissa, uh, Phil, of course, comes in with his uh, AI interest and all of the things that he does. We've got Sarah Williams, who's uh, going to really come with uh, a sort of customer service type background, so will give us that perspective from Westminster. And Sarah Lay, uh, who's also at Birmingham, who's been a part of local gov digital although not in the steering group for a long time and uh, she was one of the original people behind our our content design standard and she's looking to, to start repurposing that and stuff so 
massive, massive thanks uh, to all these people for, for putting themselves uh, forward. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, sort of managing the group and, and getting involved in some really exciting plans um, in the future. So that's it for the parish notices. So what we're going to get into now is um, the, uh, the the main sort of topic of discussion, which is all around. There's been a lot of uh, articles and things published in, in uh, the last few weeks, all kicked off by a chap called James Plunkett, who I don't think I could lure onto this call, but he sort of kicked things off talking about, is it about time, again, that we had a uh, some kind of local version of GDS to support the sector to be better at all things uh, digital and, and technology and data and all of that kind of stuff. And a few other people have, uh, have, have chipped in on this. Uh, we've got a couple of them on the call um, today. If people want to have, have the chance to, you can read all of these um, things uh, on a really handy list that Phil put together, uh, which I'm sure he's more than willing to paste a link to in the chat so you can pick that up. Or, or maybe one of the other helpful elves will be wanting uh, to do that. There we go. Look at that. He's on the ball. That's good to see. Uh, so you can sort of read some of those articles um, in there. But I thought that just for a, a starter for 10, uh, we, I would hand over uh, to uh, the Lord Professor Sir Mark Thompson, He's um, he's off of Exeter uh, University and uh, he published a thing uh, where he was talking about the need for uh, not just or perhaps not not just a, a local digital service, but actually more significant structural reform that might help that. So, Mark, do you want to take the floor maybe for five minutes just for an initial provocation and then other people can can then come in? All right. Thanks very much, Dave. Thanks for inviting me on. And uh, I'm not a, a, a lord or a sir, but I'm a professor. Um, uh, I'm an ex-practitioner. Uh, I did used to have lots of local government people as my customers, but now I don't no have any local government people as customers, which is brilliant. I'm just a pure professor now, so I can kind of say what I really think, I suppose, and, and kind of dial it up a bit. <clears throat> so... Um, what motivates me is I think uh, we're running out of runway. We've been having similar conversations. You know, do we need a local GDS? What does localism really mean? And it's all quite, it all feels to me as an outsider, as a customer of local government, a little bit um, a little bit more relaxed than the reality out there, I think, of a lot of the people that we serve. And um, and with more and more cancer going bankrupt, et cetera, et cetera, I just think this has now become massively urgent. Um, I think it's a shame we're not getting leadership from the luck that we should be getting. Um, and I don't mean that the digital team there aren't great, but this needs to be a ministerial thing. They preside over the policy for delivering local services. And uh, it's digitally, I'm afraid at the moment, it's 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 not very digitally informed. Um, so, so yeah, what was the perspective? I suppose I've used a couple of analogies. They're very, um, they're very imperfect, but if I could use them here, at least you can all shoot them down. Um, uh, so we can we can kind of get some conversation going. So I, I guess the big problem that exercises me is everywhere we look at local government as an individual organisational problem. So council by council by council has to address all of the cuts, all of the infrastructure, all the technology problems, pretty much, with a few exceptions. So we look at it individually. We're at, in fact, it's a collective problem. Um, so I use the analogy of imagine Tesco's 3,600 stores all had their own back office, all had their own bespoking stuff, all had their, you know, their own, their own CRM and, and uh, you know, ERP and finance system and marketing departments and all behaving as if they were owned by separate shareholders. We think they were bonkers and probably about 30 to 40 percent of the total operating budget of those, each of those individual stores would go on all that reinvention to back, back, back end. And obviously, I, the analogy is the implication is that's a little bit like collectively, it's no one's fault. The, the issue with the way that we run local services in the UK, which is inherited from the last century before we had this one marvelous thing called the internet. Another way of looking at it, because people howl usually and say, oh, but what about localism? And localism, I think, is a hugely misunderstood idea in the digital era, right? So localism, I've argued for some time, is often held up as a fig leaf for basically people to reinvent lots of things locally that add no value to the actual citizens on the street if you ask them. Um, and in fact, modern digital organisations achieve much better localism or, if you like, user centricity or customer, you know, are very smart about their customers by joining up the back end, consuming back end stuff, not reinventing back end infrastructure um, and things which have kind of been, you know, that they benefit from you just consuming best of class out there. 
And instead, by doing those things, by consuming those things, by sharing the data, by having common standards, by mandating that backend stuff in a very, very tight way, because their customers don't care about it, they generally free up much more bandwidth, budget, uh, and and kind of and time to really do what we call localism and local government much much better. And I guess another analogy I often use is Heart FM. So Heart FM, you know, forty three radio stations or whatever it is, Heart FM, Gloucestershire, Heart FM, Bedfordshire, and whatever. And when you're going, when you listen to Heart FM, Bed, Bedfordshire, for example, local DJs, local advertisers, local traffic, local gossip, local rate, you know, local. All of it, local weather, local things for local people, except, of course, if you ask the Heart of M. Bedfordshire listener, does, do you really, does it matter to you that the Heart of M. Bedfordshire has its own local office and its own finance system and its own, uh, they, they'll just laugh, right? They don't care. So they're not daft enough. Um, obviously, they've got control over this and we don't collectively, but they're not daft enough to, to run a separate back office for each of their 43 organisations. So they get that stuff. So in summary, Digital thinking, modern digital thinking and modern digital organizations. And what I do in a business school is really specialize in looking at ways in which modern organizations, public, private and third sector, use digital technologies and platforms. Um, but the way I, what I specialize in doing is looking at, because I'm not really a techie, looking at how they apply that to have the right operating model, the right strategy, the right business structure. So I think in summary, local government in the, in the country is totally broken. Um, we've survived on our kind of upwards for a few years and it's now really starting to run out, run out of road, I think. And any digitally literate organizational strategist would say, look at it as a collective problem, have a central hub, have a central hub for centrally mandated standards, um, everything from shared service patterns to common infrastructure to all of those things have sure have a local GDS, but a local GDS that probably sits in DLUC um, uh, that does most of the innovating. OK, uh, and have local digital teams that work very closely with that local GDS. And that includes, you know, local GDS academies and, and training and fantastic stuff, but primarily who configure that stuff, who feed upwards development ideas into a backlog for people to do that stuff and then configure it and spread those ideas right across local government. So there's constant innovation, constant con uh, in, um, configuration happening right across the sector. But we we're very clear eyed about where that innovation happens. And, and we're not trying to innovate a whole load of back office stuff, including you know, line of business and all those ghastly, horrible old things that we've really got to start to standardize, commoditize, and just consume as a common platform. And the reason ultimately we've got to do that is citizens don't care about the back end they care about the front end stuff so anyway that was there was there was a whole bunch more stuff but that's a kind of summary of it um and right now my thinking is we need what's often called a tight loose structure for local government collectively collectively in the country tight loose structure and tightness of standards and mandated infrastructure and platforms and a whole load of stuff there which hopefully lets a thousand flowers bloom and if it's run correctly much much more localized innovation so it's not it's not a, a conflict between centralization, often a very dirty word in, in local government. So let's call it um, shared, shared things um, and, uh, and innovation and localism. It's not that's not a conflict anymore because proper digital platform thinking understands how, how sharing stuff, standardizing back common back ends and consuming stuff actually can be made to unleash much more innovation, much more use of shared data and much more citizen centricity than at present. I'll leave it there, but um, there's just something to kind of, there's a lot more in, in what we've been writing about and debating over the last few days. Do, do have a look at Phil's links, um, but there's there's a bit of a start off anyway. So think collectively, I guess. It's a collective problem that affects all of us. Uh, fantastic, great stuff. Thank you, Mark. Everyone else can 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 breathe now just for a bit, uh, as, as, as can you. Uh, that, that's fantastic. Th thanks, Mark. Um, obviously, what Mark's setting out there is, is, is a vision, is his vision for, for potentially, how, you know, solution to some of the problems that the sector is facing. I think there's loads for us to, to unpack here, because unfortunately, like the question, which I, admittedly I posed, is a stupid question, because of course, when we say, do we, should we have a, a GDS for local government? I mean, well, yeah, but what does that actually mean? You know, what would it do? And, uh, and all of those kind of things. So 
we can people can say yes but and they could probably also say no but mm. and more or less be saying similar things but i think they're what, what sort of uh, mark is, is is suggesting is is that there's a requirement for some major sort of structural reform uh you know across the sector full stop um but which um you know can be supported by shared digital uh uh, technology, but also uh, c c people as well. Um, I, I, I think there. Mark, y y just a quick question, just just to, just to, for, for folk on the call. Um, you talk about the need for you know for central government really to take a lead in in this because well it's well it's fifty years, isn't it, since the last big reorganisation of, uh, of of local gov. I saw quite a few councils were putting up happy birthday messages to themselves for their fiftieth birthdays this weekend because they all came, came uh, were invented in uh, in, in nineteen seventy four or, or whenever it was. But anyway. Um, but councils on that. So if this is a central gov thing that needs to happen, and, and, and you know, in collaboration with, with with the sector and stuff, what would you say is the thing that councils could do themselves now to improve the situation that they're in? Because what we don't want to be doing, perhaps, is for us all to be sat here thinking helpless, thinking you know we can do nothing until uh, we've got a new government, perhaps, and they decide to to do this radical stuff. You know, is, are there things that, that that councils themselves do you think could be doing to help re get a bit closer to, to some of the ideas that you're? Uh, you're I, I really do. There? I think there are. I mean, I think we are. Okay, so number one, I think that until we get this stuff is is so major, I think that we probably need a digitally educated minister, and and doesn't doesn't look like Govies there um, for whatever reason, <laughs> um, uh, giving it that kind of support and that sponsorship right from the top. Um, and it needs a crack team in in DLUC to do that, sorry, wh whatever it's called, levelling up uh, to do that. Um, uh, that's really what, what the stuff needs, because it probably needs to be supported by some legislation that redefines localism. And some people may have seen, a, I've even done a kind of mock, mock piece of um, legislation that kind of, you know, that explains that. Um, so it's best led from the hub, it's best less led from the centre, it's best led from the policy department that is responsible collectively for delivering local government. Um, in their absence, I think there's a couple of things we can do. The local digital declaration was fantastic, but I think from as an outsider like me, it looks like it's not exactly run out of steam, but let's say probably needs a bit of a shot in the arm to realise its true potential, because that's the next best thing, is that meso level, actually councils coming together and going, OK, well, in the absence of, of the, the, the policy department behaving like a hub, let's form our own hub and the kind of coalition of the willing, I suppose. So that's really good. Um, but I think maybe a lot more thought about about how that how that coalition might be deployed to achieve some of the things that I outlined earlier would be would be really excellent. So I think that's that's a second second best thing. And then finally, I have to say, look, you know, there's lots of people in local government here. Uh, we all, you know, we all know uh, uh, certain members who may have a bit of kind of, you know, we need solace to understand this. We need to educate people at solace about 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 how digital affects the delivery model for local government over which they preside. You know, we need to help to educate, and I mean educate with a soft E. Um, you know, explain to members who may not be interested about about this that this is a really important thing, and we all need to kind of build a lobby. Um, and ultimately, it strikes me that if there's if you know, um, uh, we 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 had a when I when I used to run an organisation called Methods, we had a problem where we weren't being on the technology enough. And actually, and it's a story I love, so I won't tell it here, won't bore you now. But basically, uh, a bunch of really smart people got together and they just did it using using kind of modern uh, consumable technologies and made us look like idiots. They made us look irrelevant, and we had to get with the program. I think I think if enough people start doing this and 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 the lobby gets vocal enough, and let's involve journalists in this, you know, that's certainly one of my projects in the future. Then I think actually um, DLUC will have to sit up and take notice in a way that it may perhaps hasn't done uh, to date. So, but local government digital declaration has got to be the coalition to. So, and I know there's some founding members of it on this call, so um, that's got to be a start, isn't it? I agree. I agree. Uh, we've had a few uh, interesting comments that people have been uh, chucking up. I don't know whether that means that they, they're not so keen to, to come on the call to talk about them. But did anybody else want to uh, uh, come in and uh, and uh, well, you could either challenge Mark a bit or you can give your own uh, sort of take on all of this. I know that some people on the call have expressed their opinions uh, previously uh, in, in writing. Um, so uh, does Warren, you've stuck your hand up. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I, I was just typing this. I thought it was easier just to say it. So um, current, I completely agree with everything that Mark said. Uh, what I was just going to say was currently 
standards-based spend controls and delivery assurance isn't um, part of the GDS remit, but should that be part of the scope of a, of a local GDS to help make good decisions at both you know, the planning pre-procurement stage and indeed, dare I say, the P word procurement and in post-procurement uh, contract delivery and service delivery assurance as well. Can I have a good answer, Dave? If you'd like to, yes. I'd love to. Yes. Yeah, so so um, I was weirdly one of the people between 2010 and 2012 who was, um, I did a pro bono role in the cabinet office looking at um, some of the kind of roles of what became government digital service post 2012. Um, and it might be of interest in way of answering your question uh, to know that actually the initial blueprint for GDS wasn't just as a uh, DDAT kind of uh, user centric digital service design agency. Um, it became that. Um, actually, it was supposed to be those things. It was supposed to modernise the, uh, the government technology practice and DDAT and, and use centricity and that, all that goes with that. But it was also supposed to be an absolute standards hub for government, consolidating open standards and shared infrastructure across government. Um, and again, along that kind of tight, loose mode. And it's only because uh, the government digital service has gone in the, in the direction that it has, and I've written on this uh, lots in the past over the last 10 years, that I think a lot of councils, digital teams, which are loosely modelled on GDS, have also gone the same way, right? So a lot of what digital means for a lot of councils is, let's have a DDAP team, talk about user needs and, and be a design agency. And there's nothing wrong with that. But as, as goes back to the some of the articles we've been discussing over the last week, it should also be accompanied with the open standards and the shared back end to go with it. And what may not have happened over the last decade is we've just all focused in our own silos across the country, building digital teams, building services, congratulating ourselves because we're meeting user needs. But actually, when you look at the problem collectively, it hasn't had all those standards and stuff. And who's who's making my background go for <laughs> Naughty man. So, um, so yes, that's my answer. Yes, it should be both emphatically. Marvellous. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, next up, uh, Phil has got his his hand up. Hello. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, uh, Mark. Really interesting thoughts there. And I think we're all agreed that it does need a more collaborative effort. Otherwise, we wouldn't be on this call and we wouldn't be involved with local gov digital. But I think perhaps a way not to look at this is not looking at councils as individual organisations because, you know, thinking in a more agile way is I'm breaking stuff down into smaller so the subsets, councils themselves are in fact lots of local authorities. So they are local planning authorities, local education authorities, local highways authorities, and sometimes dysfunctional connections of those that don't necessarily talk to each other or work well. So when you're trying to solve this problem, you're not, or when one is trying to solve this problem, one's not really trying to join up hundreds of councils. They're actually trying to join up thousands of departments, which is why it haven't really got traction because, you know, in some councils, it's, it's difficult to do that in one organisation. Um, alongside that, there's there's also a multi-million pound industry, I'm not going to mention any of the names, of put in place to kind of keep the status quo of those sort of suppliers that we all know and love. Um, uh, they're not interested in, in joining things up, they're quite interested in selling us the same stuff individually. Um, so that that's kind of working against this as well, um, something to consider. So I don't think we, the question is, do we need a local GDS? I don't think we need a local GDS. We do need structural reform, but that isn't perhaps the the way you've envisaged it. We need, uh, for example, a digital education service. Um, that And that structural reform would be joining up the Department for Education and local education authorities, not joining up GDS across, a local GDS across councils and it needs to be led not by digital teams but as a collaboration between those people in the local education authorities and and digital teams with digital as an enabler so one thing i can and point to is is open digital planning as a model which which kind of works at the moment it's, it's an, essentially an emerging planning digital service for england and it's a collaboration between DLUC and a bunch of councils i think they all uh, announced tens of other councils coming on Board, it does help. There's some quite a bit of funding involved, which is which always helps. Uh, and there's also some legislation behind it as well. Uh, so, yes, do we need a local GDS? Perhaps not. Do we need a local digital planning service? Do we need a local? Uh, sorry, do we need a digital planning service for England? A digital education service for England? 
uh, yes, I think that's probably where we need to be looking at because that's that seems to be working in planning. Let's, let's build on what, what's already working. Thanks, Phil. If only there was somebody on the call that could talk about this open digital planning nonsense that you've just been talking. I mean, I've never heard about it personally, but um, uh, I, oh, but Matt Woodhill's got his hand up. What did you want to talk about, Matt? Thanks, Dave. I know I'm not adding to the uh, diversity quota, but uh, yeah, thanks for letting me say things. Hi, everyone. I work for DLUC. I've met several of you before, but but many people haven't. Yeah, I, um, I work on the digital planning program at um, DLUC, and it's interesting hearing comments like from yourself, Mark, around like what whether it should be DLUC, who's at the, the kind of hub of, of the different spokes. And I think one reflection I've seen, and knowing this has been going to be put out on YouTube, I'll be a bit careful with what I say here, but... Um, I think what's really helped us with planning is that we've got a central digital planning team that has a really outward focusing um, kind of, let's listen to the sector, let's get the sector to propose the solutions through this open digital planning collective. But we also there have this team in DLUC that sits next to the policy team. And even with them being on the next bank of desks over and having like my sort of regular catch ups with them and so on. And even with us having legislation that means we can set data standards, it's, um, it's not an easy journey. So I think to um, to what Phil was saying is if you want to reform um, adult social care, you know, DLUC probably isn't the right place for that mission to be led from. Same with children's social care and so on. So exactly how the different like Whitehall departments are joined up and then how they empower local government to lead the agenda is um, that's that for me, that's the big challenge. And so we've, yeah, we've got a few hints of sort of how that could be done through what we try to do with planning, but we've been super lucky in that we had the local digital fund in-house uh, in DLUC. We got planning policy there. We had like this big planning reform agenda and we were able to just knit a few things together. The timing was really good. So um, yeah, I could, could probably share some more reflections on that sort of thing in the future, if helpful. Well, we do. Uh, and actually, uh, we've got a local digital live, local digital live event, I think lined up for September that Phil's leading on, which is all about open digital planning. So Matt, it'll be definitely good to have you along at that. But no, no more spoilers, please, I think, uh, on that one. Brilliant. So uh, just we'll take a quick pause now to um, do yet another one of my really um, exciting uh, polls. So let's launch this one. So this one is just about what do we think? Just pick the pick the one that matters the most uh, to you around what is the what do we think the actual problem that could be could be solved by by having uh, some kind of uh, a, a local G GDS there? Um, and I know that a lot of this depends on on exactly what we're we're talking about um, there. But people are voting away. Quite a strong lead there for for setting standards and things like that uh which is interesting and will presumably be be music to, to mark's ears uh amongst other things uh so obviously people have been listening um but that's uh that's that's brilliant uh so those are coming through now oh, still a few more votes uh piling in can you see these while the the votes are coming in and stuff or uh is it uh do you just get to see that you've um voted i don't know anyway sharing the results here so as we can see uh strong strong uh uh lead there for setting standards quite a bit there for fixing the technology market and we'll possibly come on to that uh, in just a minute there's a few there around strategy as well i just thought i would um share a few few thoughts because one of the interesting things actually uh nick nick hill uh, asked about you know when, when we're talking about this idea of you know do we need gds for for, for local government there's a, almost an assumption baked into the question around um the fact that well does that mean that gds has been itself has been entirely successful um in its mission uh since it existed and i think that probably from my perspective is that and this isn't to do down any of the amazing work that has happened there i think that you know while they have achieved some amazing things fundamentally i think the issues around uh, a reliance on not just legacy technology but legacy operating models still exist in Whitehall now as they did in 2010 that the dial you know the dial hasn't really moved that much further I think you know tremendous things have happened around making whether it's savings and improved user experiences around the website we know that notify is great pay is great and that kind of things so there have been a few missteps um, along the way as well which is only to be understood but you know but what I think what's clear and I think this comes through the comments that Phil made and some of those that, that Mark was making as well is that any kind of change around digital in isolation 
is only ever going to make the purely digital bits a bit better. It's not on its own going to fix the underlying sort of issues. So in other words, if we did have a GDS for local government uh, and they did, we did just have one website for all of local government and things like that, probably the quality of that stuff would go up a bit. You know, I've no doubt there, there are some cases, I'm, I'm afraid to say, where it would go up a huge amount because some, some, some of the council websites out there are, are truly dreadful. But just to pick that up as an example, um, you know, th those things would get better, but local government would still be sliding into bankruptcy. You know, it wouldn't actually fix the underlying problems. So I think that, they, you know, the, 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 the message really is that, um, you know, technology reform and improvement without fixing the underlying problems is only ever well you, you just it's lipstick and a pig stuff isn't it really polly you'd like to come in yay first not man to speak yay well me. um my camera's not working i don't know why um i was at a session at gov camp a couple of years ago when tom loosemore said that he regretted lumping digital in with data and technology because it's kind of it siloized it in the kind of you know people think of it tend to think of it then as to do with technology whereas as as the technology gets more ubiquitous what becomes more important is the design elements which need to be built into everywhere and that kind of having having it seen as associated with the technology has made it harder to embed it more thoroughly in other service areas. So I wonder if that shift in emphasis needs to be part of what we're working towards. Yeah, Mark, did you want to give some thoughts on that? Mute. Yeah, Pauline, I absolutely, um, absolutely agree. I mean, you know, uh, Tom's got a particular perspective, um, and I guess out there in that landscape, I think is on this these things. He would be more towards absolutely digital service design agency perspective, um, and and I think part of that shift that GDS took, or maybe Lurch, hey, let's call it shift uh, towards uh, what I described a bit earlier. Um, but nonetheless, I think that's that's absolutely right. With progressive commoditization of technology. Uh, it, it's all about really accepting the technology as it comes out of the box. That's the underlying discipline isn't to fiddle around with it because it doesn't make much of a difference to uh, not only does it not make a difference to your local citizens, but it also creates a next you know, generation of tech debt that you've got to update and maintain all the rest of it. Presumably, it's all about shifting, as, he, as you just said, and, and, and I guess he, he said too, shifting your, your energies towards excellence in, in user centric service design by reusing as many of those common components as possible so so i think separating that separating some of that is right but but also allied with that discipline i suppose about you know resolute standardization and therefore commoditization of technology which of course means and that kind of leads us on to to you know the state of the market and um that have been getting away with murder for decades it's bloody disgraceful um but i'll, I'll hand back to uh, back to our chair to open that one up <laughs> Well, yes. Well, quite, well, I, I'm more, more than happy to to do your bidding, Mark. Um, so, yeah. So, so we mentioned uh, what, one of the the strong things that just came through from our, our poll there was around, um, you know, the to, the the fact that perhaps um, the uh, local government technology market uh, isn't quite as, uh, as as effective as effective as we would like it to be. Um, we have got one or two representatives from. Uh, suppliers uh, on the um, on the call. The fact that they're here at all, I assume, means they're towards the more progressive end of the uh, of the spectrum. I would probably say. Uh, but do any of those uh, oddballs want to uh, uh, say anything uh, to either in their defence or maybe to talk about some of the frustrations, perhaps that they have trying to be, you know, innovators in the in, in, in the market and, and whether some of these structural changes might actually help suppliers do better work for for councils, perhaps. Does anybody want to come in on that? I can't believe they won't, because normally they're banned from talking. So um anyone? Dave, can I jump in? Sorry, I can't find the hands up because I'm not used to Zoom. Oh, that's all right. Angela, <laughs> you, of course Hello. you can. Just wave <laughs> and, uh, and we will see you. I'll come in. Yeah, so um, I'm from 
our, my background is my society and it's Society Works is our trading subsidiary. So I'm managing director of Society Works. Now I come from a different perspective from suppliers. We are also very annoyed with some big, large suppliers and I won't name names because our mission, I suppose, is to, because we work on my society side, the, the charitable not-for-profit group, is to actually deliver real value to citizens. That's what we're trying to do. And we believe that a route to that is to work alongside local authorities to deliver that value to citizens and, and actually support. And I, so I come from a world where I've got a team who don't earn the big bucks. They don't do all of that. They genuinely care about helping the client and genuinely want to deliver that value. So, I mean, I'm not, um, you know, not from the big, uh, big, supplier background to have to defend it because we I see a different way I really do see a different way and I see the frustration on how we can get um lots of I guess mission driven you know um shared focused collaboration across suppliers to actually support the good so I don't know how we move to that so we're in that world saying how do we get organizations to work for the good um, and yet there are so many hurdles to do that especially when you're quite small and speaking in quite a vast landscape which is quite big and quite loud so uh, there are small ones out there that are there to help but you know there's I, I don't actually have an answer how we get through all of this no it's a, it is it is a really difficult one isn't it because um uh the part part of the problem is i suppose is that some of the you know the big line of business systems in, that, that are used by by councils have taken years to, to 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 make them you know as bad as they are and presumably it'll take a bit less time to make them a bit better but you know it's you know it, this comes down i think to you know what is what are some of the roles that some kind of sort of central agency could do, you know, would, might one of them be to actually take five years and a pile of millions of pounds to just go and make an adult social care system that actually works, or to go and make like a housing system that actually works, and 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 you know, and and, and to do it that way, or um, and I know Simon Gray makes from Birmingham makes makes this point uh, quite a lot, which is that actually it's it's it's. it's it sh the way a market should work is that small suppliers competing with each other drive innovation. And we do see that in some areas of the market, I think, don't we? But it, it does tend to be those markets where there are those smaller suppliers competing with each other, rather than perhaps where there are only three choices and none of whom have got any real incentive to significantly improve things. We've got a few hands up. Uh, Mark Gannon, I think you were, you were first. Uh, yeah, thanks, Dave. Um... Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 not a representative of um, the supplier community. I I work for a supplier. Um, I mean, we we also have the same frustrations when trying to assist councils in you know developing their digital implementations. Um, particularly some of the legacy vendors who I think the point was made earlier have no interest in changing the status quo. You look at some of the areas in particular, like social care where you've got two vendors that essentially have 80% of the market. I mean, the, the the incentive for them to do anything other than to deliver horrible products that are locked down and don't allow others to integrate to them, you know, what there is no incentive for them. I mean, the, the digital declaration, you know, made a big thing about fixing the plumbing. And, and I always thought that fixing the plumbing was really, should be about making the plumbing flow. And I think that's a part of the problem in local government is some of those big vendors just don't allow that. So it's really hard to create good digital end-to-end -end services if you don't have data flowing freely from front to back and, and, and all around the system. One of the areas I think that, that would be a good focus for this group is, is around procurement and, and how technology is procured. Because honestly, I think a lot of local government procurement is still stuck in the analog era and it needs to move forward several, I was going to say years, probably decades. Um, but, you know, um, we, we've we taken part in some really good procurement where it's quick, efficient and it's procuring in the right way. We've taken part in some really awful procurement where honestly it's taken over a year just to run the procurement process. You're not going to drive value running procurement like that. So I think procurement is an area where some skills, some development, some understanding from procurement professionals would be a good focus. 
Thanks, Mark. And, and in the absence of any actual knowledgeable procurement professionals, uh, I will bring Warren in uh, at this stage. Thanks. Uh, and I am a, a recovering civil servant who uh, have been in procurement all my all my professional life. Um, so, yeah, but I am now representing an external organisation, not one of the big um, suppliers by any means. But I think absolutely 100 percent. I think if procurement is still in, in, in a 20th century kind of paradigm and we're talking about 21st century approaches and, and pr uh, problems, then that inevitably is going to lead to friction and failure. And so I think um, in my time as the uh, former uh, director of the Digital Marketplace Programme, and sadly that's no longer uh, what it uh, what it once was, by no means claiming that it solved the procurement problem, but definitely I think if we're talking about a standards-based approach to both planning and delivery of digital data and technology transformation, if procurement isn't an app, absolutely central element to that and working in the same ways and principles and methods and practices to that I think yeah we're, we're kind of almost you know behind the curve uh, as we're seeing anyway so I think that is a, a vital thing I always kind of joke with Mike Bevan uh, when he was the um, director of the transformation program delivering the exemplars that procurement should have been the 26th exemplar because it is such a critical enabler or actually is this often the case disabler do good um, delivery then i think yeah that that i think has to be part of that um that change and uh, yeah i've just seen somebody put in, in the chat there the art the link to the um the art of the possible i think that there's there's definitely a, an opportunity for a procurement renaissance with the uh, the new legislation coming in um however the the, the increased um, flexibility that comes with those rules means that people can just carry on doing what they've always done so uh, i think there has to be a kind of a call to action to embrace the art of the possible um, in public procurement to support this thank you brilliant Warren. thank you for that uh tim i think you're next Yes. Hi, Dave. Um, yeah. Hi, Dave. I just wanted to share with the group what I shared with you on LinkedIn because mm. um, around the clinical digital manifesto in the healthcare sector. So, um, yes, I've so I've been in on a sat on a, in a similar group in uh, in the healthcare sector, and they have similar challenges to yourselves. And um, I think what was clear to me, which was kind of go, kind of follows on to the point that you made, Dave, about. The GDS is generally a good thing and there has been some successes, but it hasn't really moved forward. And I think the same stands are talked around in the NHS, but again, things haven't really moved forward. And what was clear to me sitting on the other group was that um, there's a, perhaps a lack of understanding of what GDS is actually for, uh, because there's a lot of it's a website that is full of lots of text that that people don't really look to because it's too in too in depth and too detailed. Whereas the clinical digital manifesto in healthcare, they're trying to refine it, make it more succinct. And I think it's really, really good. So I'll share that in the chat to, to see what everyone Brilliant. thinks about, because I think it's I think it's absolutely spot on. And I think um I think it provides like a framework of how you go about procuring procuring digital services, how you go about implementing digital services. And I think if that is followed, then I think uh there'll be less, I suppose, failures or things that go wrong and there'll be more successes as a result of it. So I think that could potentially be like the basis of how you go about digital. And then it's all about how, you know, what what are the gaps and what, what needs to be, you know, added to that to make it all work, if you see what I mean. So I just wanted to share that. Yeah, totally. No, well worth sharing. And uh, yeah, do please stick that link in the chat because I think that'd be really, really helpful to, to, to frame a few people's thinking and it's always good to know of course isn't it as well that you know there are other sectors struggling with these things um as, as well um rob rob miller good to see you are you in a, are you in a, a shed or something there or some, is that a summer house you're on you're on mute my friend i'm afraid oops first person to do that on the call um it's a spring house now and it was a winter house last ah, month. very good <laughs> yes um it, it, it's really interesting conversation. I, I guess it's made me think a lot about what could we get from all those different discussions around it that Phil's kind of, um, it, with his kind of community responsibility <laughs> hat on, helped us remember that we've we've discussed over the last decade. Um, I did wonder a little bit, are we caught between a kind of a governance control trap and a localism trap? And I think it, it might be more of an ecosystem thing than a governance thing. Um, and I think 
there's a lot of talk about localism and i wonder if sometimes when we think about that we're assuming people have more agency than it feels like within authorities themselves where i guess localism is about choosing which of the many fires you're putting out rather than which of the exciting new things you're doing so i wonder whether well no i think that let's be clearer that takes us away from thinking as a whole community because we're basically just looking back in our own town halls and civic centers and and panicking about the latest crisis um, I think there is something about a governance and control thing. Um, and I do think with that, what's the thinnest set of standards we could enforce? I think you know, things like the planning work, the, the reporting work, there are some things which unlock that ecosystem where we probably do need to have quite strong controls. But trying to do that on a really sort of holistic way for the whole sector, I think it's just fighting against what the sector is and the imperatives the sector is trying to manage. Um, I do think there's something about how we mitigate against lock-in and just sort of picking up on that conversation around procurement. I, I think over the last five years, we've got deeper and deeper into lock-ins with both um, historic big vendors and, and new vendors. And I, I really think we're not... Uh, our pressures are taking us more into lock-in rather than now. And the last thought, I think sometimes it feels like we think of ourselves too much as customers and look internally and don't really put enough responsibility on ourselves for our responsibility in the ecosystems as a whole. So what are our individual decisions doing in terms of opening up that collaboration and bringing um, new vendors into the market and helping those vendors succeed, picking up on the conversations that Angela was talking about? I think there's something about that healthy relationship with suppliers where we need to understand that we've got a role in that. It's not just about us sort of setting out more requirements of our suppliers it's something about the behaviors we model as well i think that's i think that's that, that last point uh well actually pretty much all of what you said rob uh, uh, i i agree with i think that last point though is a, is a really important one and that, actually we've got quite an interesting uh session coming up here's another trailer uh i think i don't know whether it's next month or the one after i think it might be the one after uh which is june which is when we've got chris thompson from northumberland who's just joined the steering group He's going to be talking about some stuff that they've been doing up there around supplier engagement and things like that and how they can make not just the council talking to the suppliers, but actually getting suppliers talking to their other suppliers a bit better to try and join some of those things up, which is which is going to be quite interesting, um, I, I, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I think all of this is all of this is true. And it, and it does strike me that this this conversation probably can and should be happening at a variety of of different levels you know there is the super big picture stuff which is that let's face it the current model of local public service delivery is a bit knackered it's not fit for purpose anymore and it probably needs to change you know there is stuff and, and mark shared some things i think in the chat responding to sarah about uh, there are things that we can do to lobby to uh to sort of share ideas and thoughts and to and to push people to to try and make sure that that stuff starts to happen and those conversations um uh, are happening so that we don't end up in the position where councils are just salami slicing their way to non-existence basically so there is that going on but nonetheless there's a whole bunch of other things that we can be doing that's, that's probably a bit more within our control to help make some of this stuff happen and, and i think that some of that is as you were just sort of saying, Rob, you know, reframing some of the ways that we're thinking about some of these problems, you know, maybe challenging ourselves a little bit about our own behaviour. You know, why are we constantly moaning about certain suppliers uh, when uh, we keep buying them, you know, anyway, and, and stuff? We're not exactly helping ourselves there, um, are we? And then I think there's probably some other bits where we can actually work together as, as, as councils just to, you know, that we don't need necessarily central government to, to intervene in any way to help us make some of this stuff better you know and some of that could be ridiculously uh mundane but you know i don't know i'm just sort of plucking things out now but and i know this isn't really the stuff that we want to be talking about but why don't all councils just agree on which laptop they're going to buy right and then just buy like thousands of the bloody things <laughs> A, a lot cheaper or something like that now i appreciate rob that you guys in hackney would want chromebooks rather than anything else but uh you know th there will be you know maybe we can buy two different kinds of laptops but yeah hey you know the numbers would still be there but it just seemed like even at that super mundane level there is stuff that we could just be getting on with um and doing um but anyway i'll stop talking because it's about other people sadly not just me uh enrico did you want to come in yeah just just on that i guess what uh what we can do ourselves at at our level and without kind of central government and 
there are examples where we you are doing this already. So I think a good example is local gov Drupal, which starts off with you know a few councils realizing that they all have a website, they all need to you know manage that website in a similar way and getting together, getting funding from local digital to do a discovery in an alpha. And you've now got 44 councils that are all building off this shared platform that is created by councils for councils. And it's stuff like that where there are lots of shared problems where it doesn't have to start at, we all need to do this. Every council needs to get on board. It can start off with a few councils. And if you prove the idea and you prove that it works, it can become more popular. So there are things that you are doing now, that we are doing now, that are working. Absolutely agree. And I think that's um, that's one of the points that, that Phil's made uh, in the past as well, you know, looking at, at, at the, the planning stuff um, as well. Brilliant. Well, a point well made. Uh, Glenn. Thanks, Dave. Um, and it probably follows on nicely from Enrico's point. Um, but I, what I would say is, is the local, local digital fund has, has done a great job in trying to bring this stuff together and trying to disrupt the market. I don't think any any of the authorities are blind to the hold that some of these uh, the, these big companies and suppliers are um, have over the um, over the sector. Um, but I think a big thing is a lot of the councils that we've spoken to um, is are very risk averse. So I think when whenever we're talking about any kind of uh, local GDS, I think what we need to be talking about is trying to remove that risk and trying to give a viable alternative that authorities will sign up to. Um, unfortunately, so I've been working with the uh, local Gov IMET project, um, and unfortunately we don't all have a Will Callahan working with us that can take a legal entity and set that up and do a lot of that administration. So for me, it's about the follow-on of um, about what, what products can be developed within the sector and shared amongst ourselves. Uh, I can't help thinking when Mark was saying that a lot of this stuff should be done centrally, um, that that would just create a bottleneck. I think there's lots of ideas, there's lots of innovation, there's there's lots of things that happen locally within within the authorities, and if that all went into a single uh, a single backlog and waited for a, a central body to to develop these things out, I can't help thinking that would be a huge bottleneck. So I think how do we um, how do we share that across across the sector? So allowing authorities that have the capability and capacity to do that but then legitimately share that and, and, and in a sustainable way and, and uh, in a feasible way that means that it could be supported because the councils we've spoken to none of the councils are interested or have the capacity or capability or um, have the risk appetite to say yes we'll develop this out and we'll support it for the all organizations all authorities um to uh to use this and we'll we, you know we'll support the product so having that central body that will pick up an idea or pick up a development that's been developed out locally um and sharing it marketing it um and supporting it i think that's where we can we can really get that viable alternative uh, good points. Good points. Well made, Glenn. And and I think your your you talk about uh, local gov Drupal. I think is it is an interesting one there. You know, I love that project in 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 so many ways. But it worries me so much that it is still, even though Will has done absolutely everything he can to make that thing as sustainable as possible, and you know he's built a cooperative around it to to make sure it keeps managing. You know that reliance on the individual to keep it keep it driving forward. I just really, really cross my fingers and hope that it can keep going. If uh, if Will decides, you know, he wants to spend his time doing something else, which is a perfectly at liberty uh, to do so. Unfortunately, um, uh, Polly, uh, this is kind of boring, um, a boring point. But in terms of in terms of that buying power you're talking about, rewinding a couple of minutes, I think that. Obviously, there are all sorts of challenges around doing joint, and there are always some joint procurement goes on across the sector, isn't there? But I, I wonder if there is an opportunity to exert power on our, exert collective power on our existing suppliers. So to kind of, you know, self-organize user groups around, you know, the horrors of dealing with Liquid Logic or NEC and, and, um, you know, kind of like the, I can't. Sorry, I can't remember who it was, but somebody made the point of the flow um, and fixing the plumbing was. You know, w one of the big obstacles to to that work is the you know the absence of uh, the unwillingness of some of the big suppliers to sort 
support proper APIs and stuff. And if that is something that we could collectively create pressure around, that feels like, obviously, it's, you know, it's tactical, it doesn't solve the bigger, um, longer term challenges, but it could really help a lot of us. Um, I don't know if there's much of that going on. Probably not, I think is the answer there. No, no, not a great deal. Angela's uh, shaking her head quite vigorously there. Look, folks, uh, this has been marvellous. So good, in fact, that I completely lost track of the time. And I've just noticed that it's just ticked over 12 o'clock and presumably you've got real work to go um, and do. Um, so what I'm going to do is, because I know how much you loved the previous ones, let's have another exciting poll. Because, you know, this is engagement and interaction um, um, happening. Uh, so do we think we should have, and I, I, I've tried to word this as, as sort of usefully as possible. Do we need more centralising teams supporting digital stuff um, in local government? Do we think, you know, wh however you may choose to interpret that, uh, even if it's just buying everybody's laptops for them, uh, you know, uh, that could that could be one. Uh, while you're just filling in that in, I mean, I, I can remember um, I, I worked for a council once that was part of a, a shared ICT uh, service. And there, there, there were four councils in total in this shared service. And each council, even in that, uh, couldn't agree on which laptops to buy so we all had different ones uh, which is just absolute madness isn't it you know if you can't can't even figure that stuff out then you know what was going on but there we go most people look at that uh 83% most people think uh that we ought to have some kind of central function that's uh, that's helping councils out in this way uh, doing something um or other so that is jolly um interesting uh loads of people continuing to share stuff in the chat uh that's absolutely fantastic what i'll do is i'll make sure i don't forget to download that and i'll send it out to everybody it comes out as a plain text file that's almost impossible to decipher but good luck uh getting the uh the gems uh in this um, we've uh, made it through an entire call without Carl Haggerty saying anything, so that's uh, that's uh, that's an achievement in itself. Um, keep your eyes out. Uh, go to localgov.digital. Our next event will be uh, online again. It'll be the first Tuesday of May, whenever that is. We've got somebody coming to talk about all sorts of stuff about uh, Internet of Things and sticking sensors all over the place and this kind of thing. It's, it sounds brilliant. They're doing some great stuff in Wales um, around that. So that's dead exciting. Um, yes, join, come and join Local Gov Digital if you're not already a member. Take part in our Slack group. Come and help people out. It's absolutely brilliant. Thank you, everybody, for your uh, input. It's been a really, really interesting discussion. I think there's a lot, lot more to be dug into here, and maybe we can think about ways in which we can do that. Big thanks to Mark for taking time out of his uh, his busy schedule uh, and uh, to, for coming along and, and chatting to us and getting us all whipped up into a frenzy um, about this. Um, thanks again to all those people that have volunteered and have been successful in joining our steering group. I love you all very dearly. And uh, I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.